New releases. All right. We're gonna start August new releases with Burn It Down. It's a very dark atmospheric platformer. You awaken in your mansion and discover that your love is missing. She's been kidnapped, but it's unclear by whom. That's a very dark start to a game, and that's how it also looks. Burn It Down has positive reviews and costs a dollar. It costs a dollar. It's available for Windows and Mac. You should, sounds like you should be able to play this. Tauronos. Trapped inside an ancient labyrinth chased by the mythical Minotaur, will you reach the center? And if so, what will you discover about yourself there in the dark? Tauronos also has positive reviews. It is available only for Windows for five dollars. Another game with a top-down fighting mechanic is Survive, and it's spelled to revive. To revive. To survive is an indie top-down shooter. The action takes place in a devastated world. Kill the infected and survive are your objectives. It's available for Windows for seven dollars. Speaking of games where you fight from top-down in four directions and all that, Top-Down Showdown, the premier top-down Smash-inspired indie fighting game. It's available in early access for five dollars for Windows. Another hack and slash game is Super Samurai Rampage. It comes from I think iOS and Android. It's a mobile game that just saw the release in August on Steam and has a really beautiful graphics, all that uh, Cartoon Network Samurai Jack vibe. Super Samurai Rampage is a small, simple, high-score chaser that's bloody retro and challenging. It's available only for Windows, but it's also only $2. Speaking of stabbing samurai swords into bodies, Nidhogg 2 has finally come out. Very positive reviews, shit ton of reviews. It came out for Windows and Mac for $15. Of course, Nidhogg 1 was a very kind of indie favorite fighting game, now finally Nidhogg 2 came out and everyone's raving about it and loves it. The rules are simple, reach the other side and kill anyone that stands in your way, that's uh, Nidhogg 2. We have more updates for fighting games, there's Rivals of Ether, Ether? Aether? God, I should not be doing a live show when I have no idea how to pronounce things. English, not my first language, okay? New DLC for Rivals of Ether called Ori and Sane, the Ori Rival DLC comes with the tag team fighters Ori and Sane, as well as the Spirit 3 stage, so two new characters that are one character, whatever, and the uh, 3 Spirit stage in the DLC costs $5 for your favorite indie fighting platformer. Band of Outlaws. Play as Robin Hood and his merry men in this 2D action platformer. Help take back England from the diabolical Prince John. Battle your friends in a local multiplayer deathmatch game mode. It's available for Windows at $5. A little bit more old-school platformer, it's Black Mist. Black Mist is a 2D roguelike action game. All stages are covered by darkness, thus it is necessary to shoot shiny bullets to the darkness and move carefully. It's available for Windows for $5. Minor Meltdown is an action-packed, team-based multiplayer game. It's available for Mac and Windows at $7. Got single-player, on multiplayer, online multiplayer, co-op, online co-op, cross-platform multiplayer, it's got it all. The sequel to a popular prison break game, The Escapist, finally comes out called The Escapist 2, no shit Sherlock, comes out cross-platform on Windows and Mac for $20. So what do we do in The Escapist 2? Craft, steal, brawl and escape. It's time to bust out of the toughest prisons in the world as you return to the life of an inmate in The Escapist 2, now with multiplayer. On to brighter topics, Tiny Rails is also a conversion for mobile, but because on the mobile platform is one of those games that are kind of slow and just take time, so they did actually improve the game a lot for PC, or just so that you can actually just play it and you don't have to wait like a stupid person. Your grandfather has handed down the train company and it's up to you to expand your modest locomotive into a multi-car masterpiece. It is available for Mac and Windows for $10. Speaking of cute games, let's look at Magic Cat, because it's a magic cat combined. Magic Cat is a side-scrolling platformer inspired by the retro games from 16-bit era. The game features a cute magical cat adventuring 63 levels, each with their own unique boss battles spread across seven worlds. Oh yes, it has positive reviews, it's available for Windows and Mac for $8. Another game about an animal is called Fox Folk. Fox Folk is a game about family, survive as the head of a small family of foxes unprepared for winter. Oh my god, that's so sad. Hunt for small animals, weather blizzards and gather firewood, all while trying to understand your small place in the world. It only costs $3, unfortunately it's just available for Windows. So here's a game called Drop Puzzle, it has a lot of very positive reviews. Basically what happens is you see an image and there's a bunch of numbers on it and you have to find two of the same numbers, so let's say that there's two fives together, you have to find a way from one five to the other by covering five pixels going there. The game also has an in-game editor which you can draw images with and it will create the puzzles for you. So there's a lot of cool stuff around there. It's available for Mac and Windows 
or five dollars. For another cute puzzle game, we have Fidel Dungeon Rescue. Fidel is a puzzle crawler about finding the best path through monsters, treasure and magic. Each match is just a few minutes long, but there are many surprises and tricks to learn each time. Also, you are a dog. It also has a bunch of very positive reviews, like over a hundred reviews. It's available for Mac and Windows at nine dollars. From cute games onto weird experimental stuff, Earthlink Priorities is a subtle mini-adventure game partly homaging those good old times when Space Quest happened and Big Brother was still considered a bad thing. You'll point-click solve at least one puzzle and get to ponder the reality of your sci-fi existence. You can get Earthling Priorities on Itch.io for free. You can just download it. It's Windows only, but you can just click the download button. I'm pretty sure the thing is gonna start coming down into your browser. And now to the games that you can kind of play already, but you can't really because they're not out yet, but you can because their demos are out. Speaking of weird adventure games, we have Watch Me Jump, an entirely different kind of a basketball game. Watch Me Jump is a digital story of scandals and betrayal played out in four quarters. The player will have to navigate through the dialogue, shaping Audra's personality along the way through the choices made. So another demo you can play is Rising Dusk. It's a puzzle platformer like I've never seen before. The unique mechanic is that the more coins you collect, the less platforms you can jump on, since they disappear based on the number written on them. So this means that you'll have to restrain your kleptomanic urge and plan the path ahead. So the game sadly wasn't funded on Kickstarter, but part of their Kickstarter, they released a demo already, so you can just go and take a look and play it, and I promise you there will be a weird foot trying to crush you in it. Oh hey guys, look, more foxes. Uh, Furwind is a light-hearted platformer with a very classic approach, colorful graphics, and a gameplay for everyone. The game takes place in a magical world inhabited by intelligent animals. Shit, ain't that? a thing for a scary horror movie. Demo is finally available. You can play the demo and it's probably just for Windows. Spread the word. I'm spreading the word, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Another demo you can play is for Attack of the Mutant Fish Kraus. And yes, this is just as bizarre as it sounds. The game has every possible feature in it and seems like a good learning project for its author, Ricky Wild of Wild Lodge Games. Uh, last of the demos, uh, Ray Bibia is a typing exorcist. Uh, there are definitely the exorcist vibes in there and reciting things from the Bible, but the way you get anything done in the game, including fighting a possessed young lady, is to type the actions on the screen. The concept was developed in 2016 at a 48-hour jam and the Italian team expanded on the idea and released a demo of it and you can check it out on their itch.io page. Out of the demos and onto retro gaming, we're gonna start with Rescuing Orc. It's a game targeting the Commodore 64 and 128. How far would you go to help a friend when your best friend Orc didn't show up for tea after a couple of weeks? It was pretty clear something had happened to him. Starting deep in the Black Forest and exploring five different areas from the perilous Rocky Mountains to the dark corridors of Bluestone Keep. Let's leave those dirty Commodore 64 games behind and talk about ZX Spectrum. Indie Retro News, which is a website that I love, gives me a lot of news for ZX Spectrum stuff. Um, and they talk about Sorcerers too, the Mythic Forest. Uh, you can download the tap files and you can play it. It's kind of like a four-way Zelda-ish thing, going left and right and shooting animals. Another ZX Spectrum game that we are lucky to play is Circuitry for the ZX Spectrum 48K and 128K. Look, I played it. It's super smooth. The gameplay, it's, I'm like, I'm amazed that there's some graphical machine code prowess in there. We're going strong on ZX Spectrum games here. That sinking feeling, three years ago, the planet Atlantis was under attack by a mechanized enemy. After a lengthy battle, the planet was saved, but many of the underwater cities were left in ruins. She must carefully navigate the ruins and pick up the treasure before locating the bubble warp to escape. We're gonna close up with another ZX Spectrum game, of course, because I love ZX Spectrum. An arcade remake for the ZX Spectrum of the game Terpins. Mama Terpins babies have been kidnapped by the evil bugs and are scattered throughout an eight-story building. And now we're gonna go into the games of the month. You've seen a lot of stuff so far, but you haven't seen the best yet. And first of all, we're gonna start with Sonic Mania. How can we not? So Sonic Mania is an all new adventure with Sonic, Tails and Knuckles, full of unique bosses, rolling 2D landscapes and fun, classic gameplay. We all love these games. It's a good game. It came out on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. It was also supposed to come on PC, uh, but it got delayed for two weeks. And when it finally did come out, the players surprisingly discovered that it was riddled with the DRM component called De Nouveau, and then a lot of people weren't even able to play offline because of it. It's a good game, but look at these reviews. They pretty much bombed the whole Steam page with just downvotes because nobody fucking loves DRM. Guys, just figure it out. Everyone hates it so much, like the pirates are pretty much competing one with each other. Who's gonna break it out and just get the, all of the binaries, all the shit out of it? And so what happens is that everyone that loves Sonic and wants to play it 
and buys money and pays it on Steam, they just get a fucked up games with DRM in it. Like, wh why can't they learn something from indies? Why are they afraid of big Sonic or whatever, Sega? Just, you fucked up. If you like Sonic, it's a great game. Buy it on any, every other platform than here, unless you don't have anything else but here then sure. Another game that came out in August that I really love is Code 7. To be specific, Episode 1 of Code 7 came out. Code 7 Episode 0 already came out when the game was on Kickstarter. It's basically like being tank or other operators in the Matrix where you're hacking the environments for the team to get through. Us hackers and hacker wannabes like to stare at blue screens and we like typing commands into the computer so a text adventures interface is definitely brings all of these feelings home. Episode 0 of the game was free to begin with so head over to Steam and just play it to get into the game's world and if you decide to stay in, it's $17 to continue with episode 1. Next game is very dear to my heart. It's Silver Grapple, a fast-paced platformer that has you swinging through the air at the speed of sound. Run, jump and fling your way through the ruins of an abandoned laboratory as you master the physics of the silver grappling hook. The developer of this game is a sole developer that's been developing it for the last 5 years. He's the moderator of Pixel Dailies. He's a really awesome guy. His first game, it came out, he's been working on it for 5 years. He has these cute graphics. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys, okay? This game is super hard, it makes you want to rage on your keyboard. But then, just when you get it, in like your 20th try, you feel more badass than Spider-Man on steroids. It's only available for Windows and it costs $15. To close off the games of the month, I'm gonna talk about a game that's actually two years old, but I don't care because it's so good and it just came out on iOS. It's called Techno Babylon. The year is 2087, genetic engineering is the norm, and an omnipresent AI powers the city. Take control of three citizens of this world as they struggle to understand a deadly conspiracy. Guys, this is just perfect point-and-click adventure while we wait for Blade Runner and Ready Player One to come out. So if you have your little iOS device or if you just heard of it for the first time and you wanna try it out, um, go play Techno Babylon. Holy crap, that was a lot of games that came out in August. I can't even 